JP Morgan Chief Global Market Strategist Marco Kalanovic joins us now on the Newsline. Marco, you were just saying, what, a week ago that the market had gotten ahead of itself, was, uh, was tempting fate, baiting the Fed. Have we gotten enough of an adjustment today, do you think? So I don't think we got enough. You know, if you look basically the day after Fed, you know, two year was about four uh, ten. You know, now it's four seventy, and Nasdaq is basically flat. You know, so so we had sort of sixty plus basis points increase in two year yield, and Nasdaq just gave back a little bit of the gain, gains from the last few days. But I do think we could see more uh, downward pressure here. Now, I was a little worried. Um, well, I still am, of course, a little worried about the market, but more worried until I saw Palo Alto Networks, because it mm -hmm. seems that for the essential things, at least enterprise buyers are still buying. It's not all about what we see the consumer uh, doing with, with Walmart and Home Depot. Is that important at all to pay attention to? So, you know, that's the one company, and I think here is the question, bigger question of sort of the level of equity risk premium and sort of multiple for the broad market. So you will have like individual companies have a good or bad earnings, but uh, here is more of a question of a sort of what's the right price that you pay for the equity? It's sort of what is the right multiple? And again, you know, multiples tend to go down when the yields go up, you know, like so I do think uh, overall this would be sort of different type of the flows, you know, and a little bit like we talked, you will have a investors moving into bonds out of equities, you will have some pension fund rebalances, some defined benefit flows from the pension fund defined benefit flows. So I do think sort of one company like you mentioned today, I wouldn't think it's going to matter. So, so Marco, I mean, you just talked about yields going up and what that does to repricing equities. Do we retest the highs for the 10 year uh, going back to October when you see the move we've had in just the last couple of trading days? You know, so so uh, we, we may we don't have a very strong view. You know, we may the ten year rallied a lot. You know, what what we uh, have a little bit of an issue is that equity multiple didn't react yet, even for the levels we have now. You know, like so even if the bond yields pull back a little bit here, there's still very big gap sort of what equities are pricing and what uh, bonds are pricing. So um, um, so I wouldn't think it's going to matter also as much um, uh, the for for the for the equities going forward. So given the fact that recent weeks we've seen this divergence between the bond market and the equity market. To put a mm -hmm. fine point on it, are you saying the equity market now has to play catch up and we're going to continue to see a sell off, especially given the fact that we're in the seasonal time where you tend to have weakness in, in equities? Yeah, so we basically think that you could see another sort of 5% maybe uh, a downward pressure on equity markets. You know, for some of the sort of tech, uh, uh, high beta tech segments, could be more than that, could be between 5 and 10%. Huh. So more, we were just talking to Anastasia about how far the Fed goes uh, in this. Mm -hmm. And her expectation is still, hey, you know, the, the market can handle 5 percent. Marco, how, how much do you have to have one eye on the Fed and how much jawboning they're doing, you know, how much they're trying to talk the market down is the only direction they seem to be trying to talk the market in these days as you're assessing what the market does for here. How much can you pay attention to the fundamentals of these companies as they report? So, so look, we had the earnings season and generally uh, consensus earnings expectations for S&P 500 and also for Nasdaq 100 has been coming down, right? You know, so... Um, you know, the earnings have been coming down, you know, and actually our view for earnings for S&P is even a little bit lower than the, than the consensus, you know. So when we look at the sort of what is the multiple right now for S&P with our EPS of 205, you know, you get uh, sort of 19-ish, you know, which is pretty high. You know, last time interest rates were around 5%, you know, multiple, multiple average, you know, 15, 16, you know, so, so you could have a probably uh, uh, two or three more turns uh, lower in the multiples, which would translate in around 10% uh, downside, you know. So basically, you know, yield, uh, moving yields um, uh, have been pretty, pretty fast, and, and, and we don't think market adjusted yet to it. So, Marco, you're saying near-term uh, lower for stocks is your, your expectation. What, where do you see us ending the year? What's your year-end target for the S&P? 
Yeah, so year-end price target for S&P is 4,200, you know, and you can say, okay, how come you think that market will end up higher? Because we think sort of a lot will happen between between now and the year-end, you know, like, so we do think we first get a sell-off here now, perhaps we retest the lows that we saw last year, and at that point, you know, Fed maybe gets a message and Fed start uh, mm. cutting the rates or signaling cutting the rates, you know, like, and at, only at that point we think you're going to have a more sustainable rally. So we really think that Fed will need to cut the rates for market to rally on a sustainable basis. Wow. Okay. Well, Fed saying they're not going to do that anytime soon. Marco, thank you.